Greetings, family, in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and internationally, wherever you may be viewing this live stream. My name is Dr. Jamal Monker. I'm the CEO and founder of New Life Natural. I specialize in natural medicine, also herbology, nutritionist, dealing with nutrition, wholesome food, organic, and research as relates to natural medicine, an alternative way of living, a healthy lifestyle in the realm of prevention of disease and maintenance of health through nutrition and healthy lifestyles. So I just want to get that. Firstly, I want to thank Alive for partnership with New Life Natural. Also for affording me this opportunity today to present to you. Hopefully what is said today uh, will be for your edification and it will add value or equity to your lives. And it can help you, those of you, the topic today is autoimmune disease and eat well, live well, which is up my alley, what I'm all about. Now, I just want to make sure that we cover this on an angle and uh, inform you guys that the premise that we're going to be taking today is from a natural perspective. I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not here today to present from the perspective of a medical doctor, but I will state facts and I will state the position of what autoimmune is as relates to the general consensus, the research, the data, and what we have become to know autoimmune disease as. And so a lot of you living with autoimmune may have already know some of the information as relates to what is autoimmune disease and whatever comes along with it. So with that said, I want to move right ahead again to this series is going to be called autoimmune disease and we're going to be focusing on autoimmune disease now at new life natural over the last 13 years i would say over the last six months to one year we've been seeing or noticing an uptick in autoimmune cases and it's very broad and we're going to get into that but it's a concern uh, as we sit and we see many behemoths stricken with um, newly diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. And so we're going to get straight into it. So here we go. Put on your seatbelt, put on your helmet, kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. So ladies and gentlemen, today, what is autoimmune disease? Mainstream medicine defines autoimmune disease as a chronic condition where a person's immune system is mis mistakenly attacks healthy cells in the body. The result is inflammation, pain, and tissue damage. You likely know someone who has an autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, lupus, or celiac disease, but there are over 80 to over 100 and possibly even 200 and more autoimmune disease, more being discovered every single day. And there are autoimmune conditions that impact or affect every part of the body. Now, there are different type of specialist that focuses on different part of malady or autoimmunity that affects the body. So if you have a condition that affects different part of your body, there's a specialist that specifically deals with that specific autoimmune disease. For example, uh, you have the rheumatologist, the endocrinologist, the gastroenterologist, gastroenterologist, you have the dermatologist, and you have the immunologist. And so all of these different specialists deal with specific or different part of the body that is affected by the presence of the autoimmune disease. So let's start with the rheumatologist. The rheumatologist treats arthritis and other rheumatic diseases, autoimmune and inflammatory diseases that can cause the immune system to attack its joints, muscle, bones, and or organs. And then we have the endocrinologist, and the endocrinologist treats disease and conditions related to hormones. And physicians in this specialty are trained in the evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment of disorders related to abnormal levels of hormones in the body. Then we have the gastroenterologist who specialize in treating gastrointestinal and liver diseases, including colon polyps and cancer, hepatitis, gastroesophageal um, gastro disease, or what you call GERD, or acid reflux, 
are also heartburn, peptic ulcers, disease colitis, gallbladder, biliary tract, disease, nutritional problems, irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, and pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas. Uh, and then we're going to go into the dermatologist. The dermatologist is a physician who has been specifically trained to treat diseases that impact the skin, the hair, and the nails. Dermatologists may have a subspecialty su um, such as medical, surgical, cosmetic, or dermopathology. Now, the Im immunologists are more commonly referred to as an um, allergist, these with allergies, is a physician trained to diagnose and treat allergies, asthma, and other immunologic disorders, such as primary immunodeficiency disorders. They specialize in diseases that affect the immune system. The autoimmune condition that an um, allergist or immunologist treats include primary immunodeficiencies and auto-inflammatory syndrome. Now, if we were to look at this photo here on the screen, we, was, we would see um, how broad and complex autoimmune disease is. It, it actually affects many different parts of the body, and that's what makes it so dangerous. And it has to be you know, uh, studied. And for those of you with um, an autoimmune disease, I suppose that you would have already visited one of those specialists that I before mentioned. And for those of you that's living with an autoimmune disease, for over a decade or more, um, you should by now be already on a protocol by your specialist. You should already been uh, taking some form of treatment. Uh, but let's look at the different variation of disease, what part of the body is impacted by autoimmune disease and where the disease has localized will determine the, the disease and its impact on the body. So let's start with the thyroids. Uh, thyroiditis, Hashimoto's disease, or Graves' disease. This is an autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid, and this is very common, uh, not just in the Bahamas, but around the world. Uh, bones, when the autoimmune disease or there's compromised immune cells, immune system in the bones, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, which is when the body attacks itself or attacks the bones, uh, and it's very painful. It's called rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, you have different ailments in the body that affects the joints. Uh, and again, the rheumatologist is called uh, to help to bring some assistance and re recommendation in terms of diagnosis and prescriptions. And we will go over the general prescriptions. And then you have issues in the muscles. And wherever there's an issue in the muscles, we know that... Um, Magnesium uh, is the mineral that affects, regulates, and helps to maintain healthy muscles and healthy nervous system. So as a nutritionist, we make sure that our clients, they have in their diet uh, sufficient magnesium, but also the simulation, the body ability to digest uh, magnesium. We make sure that um, the body is clean through detox, and there's no deficiency in the food as relates to magnesium. So uh, also the skin, uh, we look at a variation of issues or disorders in the skin. A lot of us know them from psoriasis, the vigilato eczema, uh, scleroderma, all of these different issues that affects cause inflammation in the skin. And a lot of us, you know, we're really concerned about our skin because it's the largest organ. And, you know, if somebody have a dull skin or they have issues all over their skin, you know, we, we know that's inflammation that's coming through the skin in the form of heat that's trying to escape. And so we look at the skin and, you know, it brings stress when you look in the mirror and you see your skin all messed up, which, again, we're going to get into uh, how stress impact uh, the physiological component of the body as well. Now, it breaks down other system in the body, like the digestive tract, the excretory system, all of these systems is affected and even can be a trigger for autoimmune disease. Um as it impedes the function of your digestive system and your gut uh, biome. And so if your gut health is not functioning properly, it also can trigger or exacerbate the autoimmune uh, situation. And also you have lung when 
that's impacted negatively uh, from an autoimmune disease, you have different ailments that manifest in the lungs. And again, the nervous system is, again, when uh, autoimmune disease manifests in the nerve, whether it's through misfiring, through um, the nerve cells, uh, irregularities going on in there, there's issue that causes the nerve to behave in an abnormal form. Uh, and then the GI tract, which is very important because the gastrointestinal tract, all of us to some degree have form, some form of leaky gut or some form of compromised GI tract. Because when you look at our probiotic, which colonize a colony of good bacteria in our gut that make sure that our immune system is, is, is functioning properly, as we know, 75% of our immune system is in our gut. And there's something in our digestive system known as the enteric nervous system that function in our gut that does not take directive from the brain. It tells the brain what it's going to do. It don't ask the brain for permission. It tells the brain and it needs that an autonomous power because if your GI tract make the mistake of allowing certain substance into your body, and that substance is not something that's going to benefit the body. It can ultimately imp uh, uh, impact the brain negatively, impact the body negatively, and cause other issues to manifest in the body. So it's very important to have strong gastrointestinal tract, strong digestive system. Because of eating too much sugar, um, eating too much acidic food, because of stress, because of um, antibiotics, certain medication that impacts negatively our liver, our kidneys, we have issues with digesting food, with those receptors being able to digest food, that imbalance with alkaline and acid, the gastric juices, which is acid, the liver, which secretes bile, which is alkaline, which keeps a balance there. And where there's not enough bile coming out in the system, it causes bloating, it causes indigestion. But where there's too little bile and too much acid, costs ulcers and you know acid burns and so there has there's a delicate balance in the gut where it have to be just enough the liver have to be functioning right and we, as we know the liver has 500 plus functions one of the major function of the liver is digestion so for those of us that have been taking antibiotics over the years drinking milk cow's milk eating a lot of red meat and different food that has that has been laced or injected with um antibiotics you know there's research that data that suggests that most of the antibiotics that is in use let's say in the united states is not used in the hospital it is used in the meat factory in in, in farmers that raise livestock because those pig and those those livestock have to be injected uh with antibiotics uh as for instance we know that the pig pork does not uh it, it has a a worm trichoconoa trichoconosis worm that actually lives in a fireproof pot so you can cook that pork the charcoal it will not kill this worm and when you ingest this worm it create a larvae and these food um there's research to suggest that certain food creates microcosm these different bacteria and parasites and pathogens that leads or trigger um, an autoimmune condition as well. And, and and by the way, autoimmune disease is the body attacking itself, as suggested, as um, was discussed earlier. But also, there's very little data research on autoimmune disease as relates to treatment, as it, as it relates to um, cause, causation. And so you have uh, a lot of persons uh, suggesting this cause or that cause, but there's nothing definitive and conclusive to say that autoimmune disease is caused by this and this is solution. All right. So uh, always prevention is always a plus. All people say prevention is better than cure. Okay. And so the GI tract is very important. We, we'll get more into that. But then again, the blood, when there's uh, uh, immunodeficiency in the blood, there's autoimmune disease happening in the blood. There's imbalance in the blood. There's inflammation in the blood. Uh, we see different labels. And there's over 200. And these are only, what on the screen is only a small amount from leukemia 
uh, lupus, erythematosus, all these different things is happening uh, because of inflammation in the blood. But I dare say our blood is impacted and affected by what we eat, whatever you consume ends up in the blood. So if there's an issue going on in your digestive system, it's going to permeate throughout different parts. So I dare say that the gut is a center of gravity. It's a center core for all of these different maladies that's manifesting, these different um, autoimmune diseases that's manifesting all around the body. It starts off in the gut. And so even persons diagnosed with lupus, uh, persons diagnosed with, uh, with uh, that type 1 diabetes, MS, myesthetia gravis, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, it goes right back to the gut health because if your body is inflamed in the gut and there's uh, the good bacteria that cannot function properly because the colony is decimated by the onslaught of antibiotics that we've been taking, the stress level, the lack of, of, of allowing the metabolism to reset, the endocrine system disruption, inclusive of the thyroid, which cannot function and digest and metabolize properly. It causes even the, di the digestive system that relates to excreting waste. If your waste system is not prop properly functioning, it cannot expel toxins and, uh, out of the system. It's recycled right back into the bloodstream, which can trigger an autoimmune response. Infection that is not dealt with, it can trigger these things. So these are something we have to look at. And of course, the, the last one is the brain. Uh, we see multiple sclerosis uh, and many, many different. These are only the tip of the iceberg. But again, all of these impact because of what happens in our GI tract, what happens in our gut, what happens, uh, environmental toxins, and we also predispose genetically. We are a predisposition, but there are certain triggers uh, that can trigger an autoimmune response. And so, for instance, if you are somebody that's allergic to gluten or uh, lactose intolerant, and you continue to eat food that's going to agitate and inflame the system uh, in the, the body, and even consuming uh, too much random ingredients, too much synthetic food, so much food that has artificial flavors, it confuses the body. Um, the definition is of autoimmune disease is the body attacking itself. It's confusing itself for the enemy. And so when you consume food that continue to add to this confusion, then the, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when the autoimmune disease are manifest. So again, autoimmune diseases are often criticized by cycles of worsening symptoms, also known as flares, follow, followed by periods of remission. Depending on the autoimmune condition, medications may be prescribed to mitigate and manage symptoms and or prevent progression and the disease by suppressing the immune system. If medication alone fails to manage flares or cause serious side effects, then patients seek additional therapies to complement or treat or replace the drug therapy. So here we can see tissues of the body affected by an autoimmune attack or flare-ups. And so we can see that it's an ongoing chronic uh, ailment that would normally last a lifetime in persons uh, that continue to consume or live a life that is further and inflame their system. And so we're going to get into how we can begin the process of deflaming and not engaging in inflammatory food and lifestyles. And so as we can see here, um, stress is a trigger. Um, hormones, imbalanced hormones, heavy metals or environmental toxins, metals in the food that we consume, antigens, pesticides, and poison. All of these are antagonistic substances that can irritate and inflame the system, cause inflammation. And so we uh, studies suggest, or data research suggests, that autoimmune disease impact women uh, more, more than men. Uh, scientists are still trying to figure out why is this the case. And moreover, more uh, women between the age of 35 and up, especially African-American uh, women and African-Caribbean uh, uh, females of African descent are uh, impacted more from uh, autoimmune disease. Uh, you have lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, 
uh, there are so many different, uh, I don't just want to hone in on just these few, but it's just an example to show you that is uh, the scale is tipped in where there's a, there's a, based on the ratio, we see that more women are impacted, uh, especially after they're pregnant and after childbirth, it seemed to be some sugars uh, going on there. Um, so when somebody is diagnosed with uh, an autoimmune disease, I remember there's over 200, uh, there's, you know, there's so much, and it's so difficult. Sometimes it's misdiagnosed, like lupus is misdiagnosed um, as something else because it impacts so much part of the body. And if you're not astute to do uh, a diligent, uh, you can be, uh, you know, first somebody can be misdiagnosed. And so the conventional treatment that is normally employed when somebody is diagnosed with lupus, uh, specific treatments will vary depending on the type of autoimmune condition you have and its severity. However, most treatments fall into one of the categories listed here, over-the-counter therapies, prescription medications, lifestyle changes, complementary and alternative medicine, experimental treatment, and immunosuppressant therapy. Over-the-counter therapy, uh, some of the th therapies that person can use, uh, such as certain oils that have um, anti-inflammatory properties, certain um, herbs, certain formulas that helps to deflame and helps to calm down inflammation response in the body and help to make persons more, their quality of life more better from pain, stuff people can use. And this is more for persons that is augmented along with a treatment that they may be taking from their uh, doctor over the years. They're already on a, on a medical prescription and just to make their life more comfortable and more to tolerate what they're dealing with, they may also add something to help you know, them to be more comfortable as they live with this dreadful autoimmune disease. Uh, prescription medication, uh, this is, I guess, very critical, especially somebody that has a serious flare up that you know, just got a diagnosis. And normally when they go to their rheumatologist or their specialist, they would be uh, prescribed prescription medication uh, steroids, uh, corticosteroids is one of the medication that is recommended with a view of tuning down the immune system and bringing down the in inflammatory response and calming down the inflammation. Try to put this condition in remission. So that is the idea of that. And it's very important and it has saved a lot of life. It has saved a lot of life. Um, lifestyle changes is very important. And me being a, a naturopath, and somebody as a master herbalist and somebody that studies nutrition and is a health coach, what I do is I teach in consultation. I do consultation one-on-one -on -one with clients and I teach them how to eliminate the antagonistic force or a lifestyle that is contributing to inflammatory or to inflammation. Uh, because when you, was when, you be when you when you were diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, that is not the end or the beginning of your story, your journey. It's, there are certain triggers. The road that you trod that brought you to the, to the brink of an autoimmune disease where the body is in an elevated state of inflammation. And so because we, you continue the lifestyle, then you, just, you trip that, that switch. And now you, you are no longer borderline autoimmune, you are now diagnosed as an autoimmune uh, patient. And I dare say a lot of persons that view in this or that is faced with this condition, a lot of persons are continuing through ignorance, uh, continuing to live a lifestyle that's inflaming and exacerbating the problem that you are in. What a quagmire. And so I'm, I'm saying that there are things that you can do uh, in the lifestyle uh, there are certain food that have, that has less, that causes less inflammatory response when you consume it, that are calm to the immune system, that will not trigger an autoimmune response. Uh, also, uh, you know, we have to look at uh, that as well as an impact. Complementary and alternative medicine, there are certain herbs that scientifically has property that are anti-inflammatory properties that helps to calm the nervous system, to help calm the immune system. 
that helps work along with prescription medication. We are not telling people not to take the medicine that their doctor recommends them, but there are herbs that can help put that this disease in remission and ultimately put you in a state of comfort, of normalcy, that work along with the healthy lifestyle. So it's not to say, I'm not going to take the medicine for my doctor, but I want to continue to live the lifestyle. No, if you have to make the change and then work along with your specialist. Experimental treatment for those that can't take, there are some persons that they can't take the medicine from the doctor and they have very sensitive system. So their experimental treatment that science are now trying to bring that these persons can now take to help bring some form of comfort. And uh, immunosuppressant therapy, these are the medicine that brings down the immune system, that suppresses the immune system, ultimately calming down the immune system and bringing that uh, inflammation response down. So forbidden foods, uh, forbidden food and autoimmune disease. So certain food like dairy products, gluten, uh, processed food, food high in fat, salt, sugar, additives, avoid food with heavy metals, canned foods, microwave foods. These processed uh, food, uh, they inflame the system. They uh, interfere with the function of the digestive system, the GI tract, and this will compound the problem. And so definitely uh, stress, alcohol, coffee, smoking, that's a no-no. Nuts and seeds, such as flax seeds, has omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, fat, essential fatty acids, uh, dark leafy greens, uh, has the carotenoids, the flavonoids, uh, the bioflavonoids and all of the powerful antioxidants that fights free radical and helps boost the, the immune system naturally where it at the same time it will not interfere or contraindicate with your medication from your specialist such as the steroids or the immune suppressant but at the same time it's going to naturally bring the inflammation response down but also facilitate uh, a, a system where you can live without uh, inflammation and pain Okay, um, and so again, there are herbs like the basil, the turmeric, the ginger, the flaxseed, castor oil, olive oil. These are just some of the things that you can consume into your diet that can assist you. Exercise, get a lot of, lots of sleep, lots of rest. Um, try not to stress yourself, aromatherapy, massage therapy, things uh, that helps to calm your system now, but at the same time, bring you into a, a, a space of peace and tranquility mentally. A lot of us, we expose the mold at work, occupational hazard, environmental toxins, some of the deodorant we wear on our skin have endocrine disruption. Some of the lotions and the perfume we wear, it trigger an autoimmune response in our body. So it's like, we, it's like a, living is like a, a navigation course, a hazard. We are trying to navigate through hazard, hazardous stuff. So those of you, that's interested in, uh, what did I just do? <laughs> okay, so those of you that's interested in more information, um, you know, we can offer you um, a consultation. Uh, you can go in at Bush Medicine Man. I, I, yeah, it'll be uh, on the screen. Let me see if I can type it here. Can I type it in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Bush Medicine Man. Only 30 minutes, so it's a lot of information that's compressed, guys. So I know a lot of you have uh, a lot of questions. Yes. So it's uh, so bushmedicineman at gmail.com. Yeah, bushmedicineman at gmail.com. And you can go on our website at newlifebahamas.com. Let me type it in. You can go there and you can check with some of our products and, you know, some of the things we can do. But the Bush Medicine Man, once you email us on that, um, you can set up a consultation with myself. And doing the consultation, we will put together a very, very thorough uh, meal plan, uh, uh, a protocol, a health protocol to help you with your condition, whatever autoimmune it may be, whatever suffering that you may be facing, there is a solution, there is a way. As long as there's life, there's hope. I remember the herbs is for the healing of the nation. And 
once you change your diet, change your lifestyle into nutrition, you'll be good to go. So we have a question. Thank you. I answer one. Okay. So. I answer one over there. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very, very long journey on a very short path. And join us next week, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be on the 13th of April. We will be, uh, uh, we will be um, talking about diabetes. And hopefully get your friends, get everybody together. It's going to be really popular because, as you know, it's an epidemic in the Bahamas. And a lot of persons are living with this disease. So anyway, guys, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Thank you, Alive, for the partnership. And thank you, Alive, for what you are doing in the community. Until next time, peace.